What's up guys and welcome, this is Kane from DJVB and this is the Box Video Mapping Toolkit version 2 structure for layer cake tutorial. This is a three tiered layer cake and it is one of the sub products of Box Mapping Toolkit version 2 which means if you've bought the Box Mapping Toolkit version 2 that means this is already yours. If you check your downloads you can get all this pre-rendered content. Now if you haven't bought Box Mapping Toolkit version 2 you can just buy this on its own if you want and you don't need any After Effects or Element 3D or anything like that. You can just straight up project this using Resolume and uh, follow along with this tutorial and uh, happy days. And for those of you that haven't purchased anything at all, I also have included one free clip for this structure. So you can make this structure and follow along with this one clip, which is this one playing now. And that is, uh, it's got, obviously it's got my logo in it, I'm sorry to tell you. Uh, you know, a little bit of free marketing never hurt anyone. Uh, but using this, you can at least tell, uh, how, you know, whether you can map this and whether you know what you're doing. Hopefully, you will by the end of this tutorial. So, let me just play through some clips. This is the look we're going to create today. In this pack um, that I sell, uh, there is 38 animations, all high quality pre rendered uh, 3D visuals. Um, the reason why the, the, there's realism with the shadow and lighting is because they were made in 3D and that is sort of my unique selling point. Now guys, um, we'll skip through, I mean there's, there's a whole ton of clips, there's ones I don't want to just sit and play them back but maybe we'll do that at the end of the video because I want to keep this quite nice and concise but we've got a few here that will just quickly play through, we've got some traps sort or of flubber, we've got some breathing, sort of pumping alien lung type things. Um, we've got some cool sci-fi blocks, we've got some unfolding things, we've got some accordion type things, we've got some um, wavy lines, we've got some brick sort of concrete breaking up type effects, uh, we've got some mechanical type effects and subwoofers and things like that, here's the subwoofers, uh, mechanical ones look something like this, we've got a timer countdown, um, it's another mechanical one fan turbines, we've got the all-seeing eye of doom, this one, we've got a police siren, all of these of course you could use for sort of proper decor at a party or event, uh, even for product releases, for um, product reveals that I am actually going to be releasing a, another three sample for that which you guys should uh, look forward to with Betty Breath because it's pretty cool, but I will not give any more details just yet. Right. So guys, let's get into it and I'm going to show you guys how this all works. Now, here's the pixel map. Uh, let's just check I am still recording. Yes, I am. Brilliant. Not the first time I've recorded this. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the pixel map for the, uh, the layer cake. And as you can see, we have nine cubes of which that you, can only see, you can't see all of the faces. And that is why I've got face not required. Okay, so the way this pixel map works, you can see that we've got identifiers at the bottom it says these three faces here the top ones where my cursor is that's for cube one which is this cube here then we've got cube two three four five six seven eight nine now as you can see cube five this one if we look on the pixel map cube five the red face isn't required and that is obviously because it's hidden behind here so you don't need to map it so that is essentially the pixel map explained um, the, of the white line at the bottom indicates which way up it is the text because it can be confusing when you've got quite symmetric looking letters and numbers like pluses and minuses uh, the little white line at the top of the face let just again it lets you know that that's the top of the face and I'll tell you why because when we're mapping this out we're, we're, we're going input to output okay so in my pixel map you've got the whole pixel map here which is to size in the left part and then this right sidebar that is the sort of guide helper and what that lets you know is, look, this is input, this is output. So what you need to do is take from here and put to here. That's simple, just in and then you flow and then you out. And that's ge ge generally the direction of how you would process video mapping. So, and in the middle, of course, you've got the information, just general bits. So each face, the resolution of each of these faces is 432 pixels. Doesn't sound like much, but that is just one tiny face in this whole thing. You'd need a very high resolution projector to need anything exceeding that that is high resolution for pixel mapped content and it lets you know how many faces obviously this map is 4k 3840 by 2160 I think that's the gubbins out of the way let's jump in and let me just show you how we map this now I've already got it mapped I will I will uh, start again in a minute so you guys can follow along but what I uh, wanted to explain first is 
So in the background, I know it's it's uh, a little bit unusual, but I've got a big white projection around here, a little border around my uh, my structure. Now the reason why that is, that's totally unnecessary for you guys. That is just because the camera I'm recording on is trying to find the exposure every time I'm playing a different clip and it is completely washing out the image and the video looks really bad. So I've just done this to try and equalize the camera trying to, to re-scan re exposures and it basically just gives it a nice equalized exposure and, and it's uh, got a bit of continuity. So you don't need to worry about that. that and these two layers, the masks, is just because I wanted to separate it from my mapping and it's purely because I'm recording this, that's the only reason, so you don't need these three bottom layers. Now these ones up here, these are our match layers, okay? Now let's let's start from scratch and explain, okay? So in our input map, this is where we take slices and we apply it. We apply it to our image, so Y minus, Z plus, or cube one, so cube one, Z, Z plus, where is it coming from? Now we know these are 432 pixels, so we know that the width and height of this slice here, and you make new slices by the way, by doing the drop down and slice there. You make a new slice, you set the width and height, and, and we know what that is, because it mentions it here. And then I know that this is zero, zero. So then we that this is where we're gonna take it from, and we're gonna tell it to be left top zero, zero, which basically means this top left point, we want it to be on origin, which is the very top left of the screen, it always is zero, zero. So, we take that from there, and then when you jump over to the output transformation window, that same slice will be selected, and it's asking you essentially where do we want it to go. Now, in our input image, you remember on the sidebar, we've got a little reference here, and it just it shows us where it needs to go. There's corner A, there's corner B, there's corner C, there's corner D. So, quite simply, on the output image, you use the edit points, and you line it up, and you look in the real world, and you put it exactly the same way that it shows you to, in this little reference here. You, it's, this is basically a map telling you where to put stuff. That is essentially what that is. That's the output, and it, this is the input. Very, very briefly explained. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start scratch again. Start scratch, start from scratch. So I'm just gonna resave this, and we're gonna call it mapping, and now you guys can follow along with me. Mapping, helps if I spelt it right, didn't it? Okay, I still haven't spelled it right. Du, 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 du. Okay, mapping. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all these. And by the way, the order of these does matter, but I will I will get to that in a moment when we've mapped some faces. So I'm just going to kill them all. Bye bye. Now remember, you don't need these bottom layers, but I'm just going to keep them. That is entirely not required. Okay, but uh, for because I'm filming this, I'd quite like to keep them, so I will. Now, is how we begin, people. What you do is you go up here you make sure the output is selected and you've got to make sure that you're going out to your projector of course now my projector is 1920 by 1080 that's HD that is not the same as this my input image sorry my input image my input image is 4k it's double basically in fact it is exactly double what I'm about it's double so I'm going from double size to half the size so essentially I'm losing quite a lot of resolution because my projector isn't a high enough um, resolution that's fine by the way, I do get that question a lot, is my projector good enough, dot dot dot, yes it is, um, you're just going to lose a bit of quality that's all, okay so let's d jump in, let's, so we're going to create a new slice up here, we've got a screen going out, now the slice, the first initial default slice, it's going to it's going to make it full screen, so what we need to do, sorry I've just got the slice selected, we go up here, top right, I'm going to rename it and I'm going to call this Z, Z1, in fact I'm going to call it 1Z. 1z and that means cube 1z for me width and height let's change that to 432 enter 432 enter and there you can see it is there and we want to take it from the very top left and up here that's the snapping it's turned on so we could just drag this and it will snap Oop, there we go and we've snapped it now we've got 1z uh, input map so let's go to the output and remember before we do actually remember this is the orientation it needs to go into. So we're going to look in the real world in a moment, and we're going to put this face that we've taken here from the input, and we're going to output it to that rough that position there. So now we're in the output, and I'm going to tell it, I'm going to do right click, I'm going to do match input face, because at the moment it's trying to, to map that tiny little square into the full screen, and I don't want that. There we go. So now it's, it's uh, a little square again. So what I'm going to do, 
Now, I've chosen a bad one to lead by example because it's quite difficult to actually see, but never mind. So I'm going to very, very roughly map it and then I'm going to stand up so I can get a better view. So yeah, I'm going to stand up and just get a better look at this. So There we go. That is almost beautifully mapped okay that's that's what that one done that was easy next we'll do a few of these guys you can follow along with me next we're going to do x1 or 1x all we've got to do we don't need to do that whole process again we can just duplicate it now it's the right size we can move it across and then we can rename it 1x enter okay and then output transformation now remember we need to just double check where's this going it's going clockwise by about 90 degrees and it goes A, B, C, D corners so we'll just go okay we're going to go clockwise we're going to go A, B, B and then C goes there D goes here so I do it roughly the first time round usually and then I just go in and I clean it up looking in the real world maybe like sometimes I get a little bit closer to the projection map structure so I can really hone it in lovely a little bit off there nice that's that one done we'll do one more and then I'm gonna do a time-lapse and do the rest okay so one more we'll do the Y remember I'm zoomed in here and you can zoom using the scroll wheel okay so we're gonna duplicate that again duplicate snapping's turned on so we can just snap it across Oop, there it is and we can call this one y enter okay and then where does it go it goes exactly the same it's clockwise uh, clockwise 90 degrees and it's sort of in this direction there it is so oh look it's already clockwise because i duplicated my last face so it's already par partially done and we'll just snap it snap it into place here then okay now guys, when you see these handles I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing the smaller inner handle because that is the actual vertex. The outer wider handle is more of a, a uniform um, warp which, which moves several points at once so we don't want to use those, so use the inner handle. Okay, that face is nearly in place. Now, it, in a perfect world, all of these would match up perfectly uh, but I'm not an advocate of that because um, you know these these cubes in front of us they're, they're made out of cardboard they are slightly imperfect so if these do not perfectly the corners of these do not perfectly match up don't worry too much because um, if the mapping looks good the mapping looks good you know you just go in and you tweak and tweak and um, sometimes it might not look right and it's perfectly mapped uh, mathematically and by eye in here the slices are all aligning but the world isn't perfect so you know whatever looks good that's what I'd use okay cube one done now I'm gonna fast forward guys and I'm gonna do the rest uh, myself these faces obviously you just don't map them at all just don't make a slice for those um, why risk putting that up on your screen if you accidentally push the wrong button or whatever no point so just don't map it all right guys so I'll see you in a minute okay guys so that is the structure generally mapped I might go in and do a little bit of very minor tweaking but that is it, how you map the structure I've just uh, you just watched me time-lapse do all the rest of the faces now as I said before guys um, the layer order is very important now as you go you will figure out what goes where but essentially you just need to make sure the cubes are 
on top of the correct slices so these these slices going down here the ordering is from top to bottom what's in the foreground as to what's in the background so what I mean by that is if I grab cube one um, where's the other face of it there it is if I grab all three cube one faces and put them all the way to the bottom you'll see that the layer ordering would then be wrong so you can see now that cubes underneath it's fairly you know you can figure it out it's fairly logistical this cube appears on all of these faces this cube appears on under these ones and then these ones appear under these faces you just sort of rejigger them until you get it right so the order is important also what's important by the way is if you just select all the slices in one go sorry I just need to rename this one appear to have called it something wrong okay so you just uh, select all the faces holding shift and back backgrounds click that what that does is just stops the alpha showing through because these clips of alpha you don't want to see through this face here that way my cursor is see if we would see through cube 2 and see the top of uh, the Z plus face of cube 5 so I'm talking about this area here that would appear to be wrong because this there's a there's geometry here going direct uh, straight up it's vertical it's a vertical front of a cube here and it's supposed to be going on a flat horizontal piece of a cube so the mapping is not landing on its intended geometry which will give you a false um, a, vi a, a video a video mapping that's inaccurate so you, you don't want that to happen okay so now that I've explained those things let me just walk through one more thing I also have included a test map and it's cool okie dokie people and we're recording again I just got cut off there by the camera recording length but that's fine we're back in uh, so if you've noticed the camera might have moved ever so slightly don't worry about it that's just me and my uh, my ghetto recording setup okay so what I've put up here guys is one of the included images it's called the viewer alignment something something which is uh, is going to shortly be renamed to what it actually says on the text which is test pattern spectator line of sight alignment what that does guys it's simply a flat uh, Venetian blinds images uh, image sorry of red and blue and it's got some text on it and it's mapped just like my content so it's all jumbled up as you can see here where my cursor is but when you've mapped the structure correctly and you put it on you'll know that you've done it right because it will be legible and none of the uh, none of the faces are going to be the wrong way or oriented incorrectly and it's, it's just a, a very obvious way of you knowing how, how well you've mapped it let me just show you what it will look like if you've done something wrong so if I was to grab I don't know um, this face here on the input and I'd mapped it wrong that's what it would look like so you'd know it would be very blatantly obvious if you've uh, done it incorrectly Okay. now also it's a good way of aligning where your viewer should be viewing from so see this image this is the angle the optimal angle to view this from if you're very far left or very far right or very far up or very far down looking at the same object the mapping isn't going to be as accurate and it's not going to look quite right this is the optimum angle and you would know that you're in the right place because once again the legibility of this will be perfect my camera is in the right place after I've played through some clips in a moment I will actually keep recording and just move my camera and you guys can see what I mean so it's a good way of finding where do I actually want to be putting my audience and spectating from and this is how you figure that out so that's what this clip is for okay guys so what we're gonna do is we're gonna play through some clips and then what I'm gonna do is I'll just uh, make a new recording and I'm gonna show you guys the setup files because I'm gonna include it in my download I'm gonna include the Resolume compositions and output slices um, by default and I'll show you where those go so you guys can basically skip all these steps and just tweak the output so I'm gonna essentially include all of this stuff all the XML files blah 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 so you guys can just go in here and you can just start tweaking these faces and you can get up and running real quick because I know everyone likes efficiency right then let's play through some clips I'm um, I'm just gonna basically do a demonstration now of what some of these clips look like we're going to play them through in a sequence uh, the first one being the free sample so anyone ah I've skipped a step okay because I've got this background guys I need to just set all my slices not to play the whole composition but instead just to play the um, content layer there we go you won't need to do that because obviously you guys won't have a white background it's really it's really uh, unorthodox but I need it because I'm recording this and I need the exposure to be nice and beautiful so 
let's get a new exposure there we go and we'll set all my clips to not auto pilot do nothing okay and now let's click through them so this is blood the next one this is ceiling drops it's a liquid type effect looks pretty cool cascades down the layer cake this one here is cloth box it's a cloth it's a sort of ball stuck in a cloth box this one here I can't remember what I called it S sphere noise uh, cube noise spherical I believe just a little animating cube brick type animation this one unfolding unfolding uh, flat packer box this all comes with a product by the way if you buy it standalone you can just map it straight through Resolume I'd highly recommend Resolume um, not being paid to say that they're just it's an awesome piece of software and it's really intuitive and I love it I've got nothing but love for that piece of software so that is my recommendation there's other software available I'm sure uh, if you've got a preference there's, there's things like um, Touch Designer there's Hypnotizer there's uh, Mad Mapper, there's loads of different ones. Take a look and see what you prefer. Okay, so electricity. Then we've got uh, the Echo Cube. I, I really like this clip. It's a very simple clip, but I do love it. Then we've got uh, Bass Kicks Phys X. It's like this sort of bass, bass bumping particle effect. We've got the Echo Wireframe clip, another one of my faves. Uh, we have Flubber not inspired by the movie Flubber allegedly we have breathing an alien like breathing organism 12 this is what the uh, the free clip is based on with my logo in it this is uh, unfolding physics box this one is red wireframe it's just sort of folding and uh, flat packing itself and doing some cool sort of origami type effects Lattice, this is kind of like an accordion type thing. Next one is circuit. This is like an electronic circuit, kind of like a matrixy type deal. The one after this is fractures. It's like a concrete type purpley surface that breaks up and swells around inside its uh, own little bounding box. The next one is very similar. It's more chaotic though, it sort of does a spin. I do like this clip as well, it's one of my faves. This next one is the uh, Rebuilding Slices. Self-healing fracture, I believe I called this one. And it is a, a cube that fractures itself and then unfractures. All of these are offset in time per cube, so you get a, a unique animation per, and the orientations have changed as well. Next one, spheres. So it's like a physical spheres that bump and collide into each other, and they've got like a molecular kind of attachment to each other. The following one, Subwoofer, old school, very simple, but who doesn't like a subwoofer? Good for free parties and festivals. Next one, countdown timer. This one counts down from 10. Maybe if you're doing a birthday bash or something sci-fi related, maybe a New Year's Eve one, something like that, this would be a good use for this clip. The next one is, uh, again, along the alien type sort of sci-fi vibes. We've got this unfolding turbine box. Now, if you've got After Effects and you're a sort of video editing type geese like me, you can put your logo in here. If you've got the Box Mapping Toolkit version 2, you use Element 3D and After Effects. You can bang your logos. You can do an awful lot more with this product. This is just the sort of pre-rendered one I'm, version I'm talking about. But the in the toolkit where you edit it yourself and you have After Effects and Element, you can do so much more with this. And you can actually create your own structures very easily. I have a bunch of tutorials. Check those out. Next one, Particle Light Trails. This is a very subtle clip. There's not a lot of movement going on. You've got to have a nice balance, I find, when making packs of fast pace and slow. This next one is the all-seeing eye of death. It's kind of based on a CCTV camera type vibe. That's what I was going for. And they're sort of searching for its next uh, kill or what have you. Police sirens. This one's good for intros to uh, maybe accompany a lighting sequence uh, with the lighting operator. This is cool for intros, most definitely. I um, have used something similar to this before for an uh, Andy C show I, I helped design, and it looked wicked at Alexandra Palace. Um, shout out to all the production team because those guys are cool. Next one, uh, the the melting impossible cube. This is like a sort of plasticky melting type animation. 
The one after this is, uh, yes, voxels. This is made out of sort of pixel type voxels. A voxel is just a 3D volumetric pixel, by the way, guys. And it's a trail of them um, that sort of zip around like Pac-Man type deal. Not Pac-Man, sorry, Tetris. Okay, next one. And I do not remember what I called this one, but it's nice. <laughs> next one. Pistons, it's like an engine type deal. Um, it's a cool clip, I like this one. Next one, this is probably one of the more complex clips. It's a um, it's a mechanism, it's got little valves and cogs and, and a piston in there and it's got uh, timing belts and it's got chains. Um, a lot of effort went into that one. Check it out, you can zoom in. Uh, that the resolution is very high when you um, when you're in the box map and toolkit version 2 pro you can you can make these as high res as you want you could have a full 4k three-faced map if you wanted to this one that's playing now is the mesh deform pretty cool this one can be audio reactive I'm actually I've been there's a long awaited tutorial coming out for that guys so just keep waiting and I do apologize for the delay this one is uh, flyaways this is like a wire sort of it's uh, an anti-gravity wire thing like a spider web that sort of sucks in on itself and rebuilds next one uh, these are sort of churning there's a molecular uh, bond between these particles and they sort of um, they actually repel each other and churn and spin which is nice next one is uh, the old school gimbals this is the very fast pa uh, very first pack I believe or no the second pack I put out on Resolum um, big up Resolute and uh, yeah so I've done sort of a 3D sort of modern twist on that next one I wanted to do a version of TV glitch type effect but I wanted to do a 3D one using displacement and I think I hit the nail on the head don't look too bad uh, very abstract but looks cool now the next one I love this is definitely my I know I've said that several times the next one is my favourite clip boom because it's got liquid in it anything with liquid just looks cool doesn't it yeah, yes it does. Maybe we'll just re-expose the camera just a wee bit. There we go. Yeah, that looks nice, doesn't it? Uh, the next one is the Voronoi. It's a very abstract sort of cube animation. And finally, the last one is another version of Clip24, which is all seeing eye, but instead of coming out of the corner here, it looks out the side. I just wanted to have a varying version of that for people that are using this front on and mapping not looking 45 degrees but perhaps they're mapping onto a building. That's what this clip's for. Um, this is what it looks like and it spins as well so they're actually directly hunting for their next target. That's all the clips that are included in Box Mapping Toolkit version 2 guys. Um, but that is not to say, hint hint, that there isn't another whole dump coming of clips. Yeah, it's something that's getting uh, expanded. Uh, I'm not going to put any dates on it yet because I am um, renowned for being ever so slightly late for absolutely everything but yes that is what my plan is guys. And with that we are done so I will see you guys in another tutorial uh, but happy mixing from me DJ VB.